The purpose of this video is to support an Instructables page I've written on converting a hoverboard into a pottery wheel. All details are given there, dimensions of wood, cuts, etc. And details of how to extend the leads from the wheel with these, with these wires. And all the electronics that we use from the hoverboard. This shot shows a second wheel with screws holding down the wheel head as well as silicon. All the electronics are housed in a food container. So we will see the motherboard at the bottom of the picture here and the two sensors, gyro sensors, that control each wheel. The spare wheel from the hoverboard is contained in that box as well as a counterweight and also because the motherboard must receive a hall sensor signal from that wheel to say everything is okay otherwise the motherboard doesn't function. All of the electrical components of the original hoverboard are connected in exactly the same way as they were in the hoverboard. The only real difference is the orientation of those two gyro sensors and the fact that the power leads to the spare wheel are not needed, so I've cut those off. On the bottom of that box there's a piece of wood to act as a pivot and the power lead and the on-off switch are housed in the sideboard of the box. And then on the toe end of the box, or the front of the box, there's a leg with an adjustable foot at the end to allow the whole of the box to be levelled. And the reason for that is the gyro sensors will provide power to the wheel unless they are absolutely horizontal. So we get zero rotation by levelling that box and then varying degrees of speed by tilting the box. So the five pin hall and the three pin power connectors are made between the wheel and the motherboard. The 36 volt battery is connected. And when you press the on off button you should hear the same sound as you do on startup of a hoverboard otherwise you'll get an error sound and usually on startup the wheel will spin because you haven't got the box level so it's just a matter of adjusting the foot and when that's done it's ready to go A few degrees of rotation give quite precise control on the, the wheel and you can do this with your foot directly on top of the box although the, the wheel shaft from the spare wheel that's in that box does get in the way a bit and it's not really that comfortable to work with your foot unsupported so a better system is to have a support behind the box that holds your weight on your heel and just touch the front of the box with your toe and that way you can get really precise control. The wheel has to be used on a table or a chair because it doesn't have adjustable legs but once that uh, relative height of your body to the wheel has been set then the wheel behaves in much the same way as a normal commercial wheel. There's plenty of power in that hoverboard motor as it's designed to move 100 kilo body weight up a hill. So plenty of power in there to throw a few pots.